again in the studio again tonight. And I believe by the grace of God that the Lord has got something for you. God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to a couple of people tonight. And I know you are one of those people He wants to speak to. He wants to address those questions. He wants to give you an answer to those questions you've been asking. To those problems that has been weighing you down. God wants to meet you at the point of your needs tonight. And I believe as you watch me. The Lord will meet you. The Lord will answer you. The Lord will say to you, Can I have an amen? If you have your Bible, I want us to start studying from the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel. And I'm in 1 Samuel chapter 9. Um, here, the Bible tells us about the story of a man. This man, is, his name is Kish. He has a son called Saul. And what happened here? was that at some point in their life, uh, Saul, uh, Kish lost one of his sheep. And Saul, the son of Kish, had to run after that sheep that was lost. And I'm going to start today's discussion from verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 3. Now the donkey belonging to Saul's father, Kish, was lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, Take one of the servants with thee, and go and look for the donkey. So he passed through this ill country of Ephraim, and through the area around Shalisha. But they did not find him. They went on into the district of Shal Shalim, but the donkey were not there. When he passed through the territory of Benjamin, but the they did not find him. I want to let you know, brethren, I don't know what you are looking for. I don't know what, I've, what has gone lost in your hand. Uh, maybe you have just lost your job. Maybe you have just lost a marriage. Maybe you have just lost something. Maybe there's a business you are meant to do that you have just lost. Maybe there's something, maybe it's your academics that has just, been, that just slipped out of your hand. Maybe there are some projects you are meant to do or to have done that have just messed up. Maybe there are things you are crying about. Maybe there are things you are looking for. Maybe you are looking for a, a, a child and you are and, and doctors or people have told you that you are barren. Maybe you have just lost, you have just, I mean, you just lost something very vital and you are worried and troubled about this situation. I have a good news for you. Just follow me. And see what happened to Saul. And then you'll be able to tell why this situation you are high right now. Or that you are going through right now. You may be able to tell and give yourself an answer that will comfort you. Okay. The Bible says, verse 5. When they reached the district of Zor, Saul said to the servant who was with him, Come, let us go back. Or my father will stop thinking about the donkey and start worrying about us. But the servants replied, Look, in this town there is a man of God. He is highly respected and everything he says comes, to, comes true. Let's go there now. Perhaps he will tell us what way to take. Now, the story continued, but I want to just jump because of time to verse 15. Now, the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Saul, to Samuel. The Lord had revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of the Benjamin, anointing a leader over my people Israel. Now, at some point at a particular area in a particular area at some particular point Saul was busy worried about this donkey that was lost he was crying about this donkey that was lost he was determined to get this donkey back but at the other extreme point was God and Samuel discussing about this issue 
Saul was looking for a donkey. And because of a donkey, he was worried and troubled. But at the other end, God had called a prophet discussing about Saul, even when Saul was not there. Discussing about Saul, even when Saul did not know. God went to tell Samuel, there's a guy that is coming. But the only way the guy will come to you is that he must have lost something. Oh, I don't know what you have lost, but you are going somewhere. I don't know what you are crying about. I don't know what you are crying for, but you are going somewhere. Saul went out in search of a donkey, but he did not know that there was a greater plan of God. But the only way Saul would get to Samuel is that something must be lost. I don't know what you have lost. I don't know what you are crying about. I don't know what you are crying for. I don't know what sort of thing you desire desperately. But you don't know what is the plan at the other end. Now look at, let's go further. And I want you to see something. Because I've been in that situation before. When I cried about situation, I cried about that, I cried about this, I cried about so many things, but I did not know God's plan in what I was going through. But now I'm here tonight to show you that in any situation you find yourself, there's your, there are two plans. There's your plan and there's God's plan. Now let's watch. Now, verse 16. About this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, anointing leader over my people Israel. He will deliver my people from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked upon my people, for their cry hath reached me. Can you imagine how God was setting a man up? God set Saul up. And Saul did not know. Maybe what you are going through now is a setup from God. It's not everything you go through that is a setup from the enemy. Maybe you have lost something. Maybe you are going through a challenge in your, in your office. You are going through a challenge in your marriage. You are going through a challenge in your business. You are going through a challenge in one situation or the other. Even in your health, you are going through one, one challenge or the other. It could be a setup. Come on, brethren. I'm here to tell you tonight that the God we serve is a God of setup. He sets you up without you knowing. And many of us, because we didn't know, or because we didn't know at the beginning that it was a setup, we started complaining. We started grumbling. But God is a God of setup. He sets you up, but you, you will know. So Saul left his father. He went after this donkey. He went in desperately after the donkey. But he did not know that there was a setup ahead of him. Let's watch what happened. Verse 17, when Samuel caught sight of Saul, when Samuel caught sight of Saul, look at, the Lord said to him, this is the man I spoke to you about, he will govern my people. Saul was on the left, struggling about the donkey. God was on the other side, talking to Samuel about making Saul a king. But did Samuel know? Yes. But did Saul know? No. What was Saul looking for? He was looking for a donkey that he has just lost. But how will Saul get to Samuel? Something must be lost. The donkey must be lost. So he was, he was going in search of the donkey. He found himself in a place of blessing. Come on, whatever you have lost... It's going to take you to a place of blessing. Whatever you have lost, is going to take you to a place of promotion. Whatever you have lost, is going to take you to a place of abundance. Whatever you have lost, is going to take you to a place of greatness. If only you know how to manage yourself in that situation. See what Saul did. 
The Bible said he waned. The, 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 the servant told him, let's go after a man of God who will tell us the truth. He managed himself well. Imagine if you had said, I don't care about a man of God. Let me go back home. You would have lost the opportunity. But it was a setup. Come on, say to yourself, whatever I'm going through is a setup. Oh, God is a God of setup. He's setting so many Christians up. He's setting his children up. He's setting you up for promotion. Not to bring you down, but for promotion. But either you go up or you go down is a function of the way you manage yourself in that crisis. Hallelujah. So, verse 18. Let's go back to verse 18. Saul approached Samuel in the gateway and asked, Would you please tell me where the seer's house is? I am the seer. Samuel replied, Go up ahead of me to the high place, for today you are to eat with me, and in the morning I will let you go. And I will tell you all that is in your heart. Oh, watch. What was in his heart? Why did he come to Samuel? Did he come because he knew he was going to be a king? No. Why? What was in his heart? He thought the seer would tell him something about what he lost. That was why he came. But you're going to listen in a minute to what Samuel told Saul. And the Bible says, as for the donkey, you lost three days ago. Do not worry about them. They have been what? Found. Oh, the donkey that brought Saul to Samuel was lost here. But the moment Sam Saul got to Samuel, Samuel said the donkey had been found. Was the donkey lost? No. But without the donkey getting lost, Saul would not come to Samuel. And then he would not become a king. I'm here tonight to encourage you. I don't know what you're crying over. I don't know what you're crying about. I don't know what is giving you a sleepless night. I don't know what makes you call men of God, pastors all over the world, to pray for you. And you are crying, you are not getting results. You are asking God, why? Why am I going through this? Why am I going through that? Why am I going through this situation? Why am I going through this difficult situation? You are troubled, you are hurting, you are frustrated, you are unhappy, you are you feel so rejected. You feel that God has forsaken you. You feel like God is not answering you. It's not because of your sin. It's not because of one thing you have done wrong. It's not because of one thing you have done right. It's just because God is a God of setup. He's setting you up. And most of you don't know that when you go through a, a situation like you are going through right now, you don't know that it's a setup. You lost a house, it could be a setup. You lost a job, it could be a setup. You lost your husband, you lost your marriage, it could be a setup. You lost your wife, you lost your children, it could be a setup. Oh, you don't know God is a God of setup. He's setting people up. Oh, let me tell you another story. Let me tell you another st one that would. That, 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 Drive this, this point home quickly. Let me show you. The Bible talked about Job. One day, Job went before the Lord to pray. He appeared before the Lord with some other Christians, with some other believers. Let me, let's call them believers. And Job was here. Before the Lord, he was here. See, Job was here. And God and Job, God and Satan, Satan was there too. So God and Satan were talking on the other side. But did Job hear about that discussion? No. But Job came to appear before God. What did God go to tell Satan about Job? He said, have you considered my servant Job? That there's none like him. A man that feared me. And assured evil. But Job was there. 
And Satan said to God, he said, God, is it not because you have put, a, you have put an edge all, all around him? Take the edge away and you will see if I have flipped him, if this guy will not curse you. Was that not a setup? What sin did Job commit? No sin. God said, testified of Job, a man that feared God and eschewed evil. An outstanding, excellent man. God said, this guy has not committed any sin. But in between God and Satan, they were setting Job up. And then, the enemy said, take all the edge around him. And let me show him, show you, when I show him, you will see that he will, he, he will curse you. But Job was there, he didn't know. And God said, go, okay now, I am taking the edge away. Did God tell Job that he was going to take the edge away? Job did not know. But how did Job win this battle? Job behaved himself before the Lord. Oh, well, come and set yourself. God is a God of setup. Whatever you are going through, maybe you are going through a difficult time like Job. But I want you to know tonight that God is a God of setup. Oh, Job said something. He said, even if you slay me yet, will I trust him? Oh, because he knew that God is a God of setup. Until you know, until you know, and you really know, and know, and know, and know, you'll be making a great mistake. Whatever you are going through, it is not the enemy. It is it is a setup. God allows it for a reason. Because the enemy will not afflict you. The enemy will not touch the righteous except God allows him. If God allows him, then it is for a setup. It's not because the enemy is great or powerful. It's not because the enemy can afflict you. It's not because God is, is careless. No, he's not. He's a careful God. He's mindful of his children. But when he allows you to go through it, it's because he's setting you up for your promotion. Many of you miss your opportunity for promotion because you start to grumble, you start to complain against God because you did not know that it was a setup. Now, what did Job do? The Bible said the moment Satan started afflicting him, the guy cried, Oh, I've lost my children, I've lost my wealth, I've lost my servants, I've lost all that I've ever worked for. But what did he do? In that distress, Job went before the Lord. He lay down before God, the Holy One of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Israel, the one that the Bible says that he, he clothed himself with honor and majesty, even as the garment, the God that runneth upon the winds of a cloud and maketh the winds his chariot, the one that is called the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one that knows the beginning before the end. Job went before him and prostrated. And worshipped God. Last, let me ask you, when last did you worship God in your in this situation? When last did you worship God in this your circumstances? When last did you give him praise? You have not lost seven children. Job has just lost seven children, but yet he's given him praise. Most of us, because let me tell you the, the truth. Most of us, we don't know that what you're going through is the main reason why you should praise him. If Job had lost his life, he would not have praised God. It would, there's no way he would praise God. The dead cannot praise him, but the living can. So what God will always do is that he will give, use this situation to give you an opportunity to praise him. Because he knows that most of you know how to praise him when things are good. But when all chips are down, can you still praise him? Oh, come on, tell yourself God is a God of setup. Oh, he's a God of setup. He's setting you up, but you don't know. You think it's the enemy. You're shouting on the enemy. You are crying on the enemy. You are telling the enemy to fall down and die. The enemy is not falling down. Satan is not dying. Satan is living. Oh, you bind him on Sunday. He's losing himself on Tuesday. You bind him on Wednesday. He's there on Thursday. You bind him another Sunday. Don't, and don't you know that he's tell, the enemy, Satan is telling you that you are a fool? He's making a fool of Christians. 
Because my people perish out of knowledge, out of lack of knowledge. You must understand the reason why you are going through what you're going through is because God is a God of setup. Let me give you another one. God showed a dream to Joseph. And Joseph believed the dream that he was going to be his father, his, father, his brothers, his, uh, all his siblings are going to bow before him. That was a dream, and he believed that dream. But did God tell him that his brothers were going to sell him into slavery? Did God tell him that he was going to go into Potiphar's house and he was going to be tempted with Potiphar's wife? Did God tell him that he was going to be sold into from Potiphar's house and go back to the prison? Did God tell him that some people will... I mean, did, did God tell him all these things he was, going to, he was going to go through? But did God tell him he was going to have... A, he, did God show him a dream? Yes. Did God tell him his, in the dream that his brothers, his fathers and were going to bow before him? Oh, yes. But did God tell him the rest picture? No, because if God had told him the rest picture, Joseph would have said, Lord, no, I'm not ready for it. Oh, come on, say to yourself, God is a God of setup. Let me show you another person. God told Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to make you the fathers of many nations. Abraham said, Lord, just make me a father, a father of one man first. Oh, the, the Lord said, don't worry, I will give you, I will give you a son and I'll make your, your, uh, your descendants to inherit the heart. Oh, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. But look at it. For, did God tell Abraham that for 25 years he had to wait for that promise? God did not tell him. But yet, the guy had to wait. Let me tell you, many Christians, you have faith on the word of God. God speaks to you now. You believe him now. And then you, you believe him next year. You believe him another year. Another three years. After three years, you start to grumble. You start to complain. But did he tell you that he was going to do it for you in three years? No. Most of you are married. You are believing God for a child. And you are saying, Lord, I waited one year, two years, three years. Did they tell you the year? No, he did not tell you. Yo, know, you are believing God for a job. You have waited one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. But did he tell you when he's going to give it to you? No. So the same way God did not tell Abraham when he was going to give him that child. But God told him you are going to be a father of many nations. Abraham believed God. But God did not tell him how many years it was going to be. That 25 years was a setup for Abraham. Oh, you are going through a setup. But let me tell you that I can tell you. If you understand what I'm sharing with you tonight, you will have an understanding of how you can have your own victory in the midst of your challenges. It's a setup. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me show you another setup. The Bible says in the matter of two or three witnesses, all matters shall be established. What I'm sharing with you, I've shown you three scriptures already. Let me show you one more. God went into, into the house of a, a man called Jesse. He wanted to make a king for himself there. And he went there, he met a guy whose name was David. And God went there and anointed the guy. He said to Samuel, anoint this guy as a king. The guy was happy. He rejoiced. But did God tell him that for many years, 18 years, that Saul was keep chasing his life? If God had told him, David would have said, no, Lord, keep it. But because he, God did not tell him, he believed God, he thought he was going to be a king the next day. He trusted God for the first year, for the second year, for the next year, and the 10th year, 11th year, 14th year, and many years after. He was not a king. It was a setup. Many of you, because God, God, God is not giving you what you want the next day, you back, you, you move back, you backslide, you walk away from God, you are angry with God because he has not answered you, because you are praying in your mind when you are praying. What are you thinking? You are thinking that he will answer you the next day. But because he has not answered you the next day, does not mean he will not give you what you have asked for. It's because it's a setup. It's because it's a setup. It's a setup. Most of the time you don't know this and that's why you're working with. You complain against God. You are angry with God. You are angry with your pastor. You are angry with your church. You are angry with your Bible. You cannot even read the Bible again. You cannot even ever go through the street and evangelize again because you are angry with God. Because you are angry with everybody. Because it's, you don't know that is a setup. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to you tonight? It's a setup. Let me show you one more. 
Oh, man, I can show you many, many, many in the scriptures. It's a setup. God is a God of setup. Let me show you another one. The Bible said that God told the children of Israel, He said, I'm going to give you a promised land. This is the plan I promised you. I promised your father. I promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, this is the land I'm going to give you. And He said to, Mo he said to Moses, He said, Pick people. Pick 12 people. Let them go and let them, let them go and spy on the land. Check the land and see that it has everything that I promised them. And those guys were happy. They all ran to the land and checked the land. But when they got there, they saw something. They saw everything God said. The land has milk. It has honey. It flows. Everything there is good. But there was something that God did not tell them that they were going to see in that land. And what did they see? They saw giants. But did God tell them they were going to see giants? No. It was a setup. It was a setup. God knew that they were going to be giants. But God did not tell them they were going to be giants. God knows what you are going through. He knows everything you are going through. Even before you started going through it. it because it's a setup. Let me tell you the last one. The children of Israel. I can tell you many more. The children of Israel. They left the land of Egypt. And they were going to pass through a shorter route according to Exodus chapter 13. God knew that they could pass through a shorter route. But what did God do? He took them through a longer route. And when those guys had gone, and God knew all these things. He knew if he took them through a shorter route, uh, and they may find some things there and turn back. But God took them through a longer route. But he knew that when they passed through the longer route, they would be thirsty. They did not know that. He knew it. And they got to a place and there was no water. And they were complaining against God. And they were angry. And God, they did not know it was a setup. Listen, brethren, my time is gone tonight. I want to continue this series on the ex from Exodus. I want you to see, and that's going to be the part two of God is a God of setup. He sets people up. Whatever you are going through, I want you to be rejoicing and praising God and exalting Him, even in the, in the midst of your challenges. Stop, 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 stop calling God names. Stop getting angry with God because there's no man that can be angry with his maker. You know it to yourself. Even ask yourself, you have been angry, you have been bitter against God. Has your situation changed? It's because my people perish for lack of knowledge. You need an understanding to know what you are going through, to know why you are going through it. Because if you know that the Bible says that he, that he that has begun a good work in me is faithful to complete it. Listen, he is able to complete what he has begun. Just give him a chance and let you let me let you know that whatever you go through, if you go through a, a, a test, it's because it's that test which will, will end up in a testimony. But, my, but if you don't go through a test, you cannot have a testimony. The reason why you are going through what you are going through is because God wants to give you a testimony. According to the book of Luke chapter 21, from verse 12 and 13, you must understand this, brethren. And I want to believe by the grace of God that as you watch this program next Sunday and next time in the next Wednesday, I believe by the grace of God that I'll be teaching you the second phase to, 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 to God. He's a God of setup. So you will stop complaining and you have an understanding of why you are going through what you are going through. The Lord bless you. Shalom. Praise God. Enjoy.